And so, Lord, we yield ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to your wisdom because every answer is in you. (laughs) Every answer is in you. You are the need meter. You are our need meter. You are our healing. You are our peace. You are our prosperity. You are our wholeness in every way. Father, we thank you for that shalom here. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Peace of God. Hallelujah. Oh, we're so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. That you loved us first. You loved us first. We love you because you loved us first. You looked out into this world and you saw us. (laughs) Hallelujah. And you ordained a way. So that we could have fellowship with you. Oh, we thank you that you long for that fellowship with us. Oh, glory to God. Father, we do give you all the glory. All the honor and all the praise in this place, Lord. You're so worthy, Lord. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I speak to all weight and heaviness in the name of Jesus. And I declare that it must bow now to that name that is above every name. You said at that name, every knee would bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And so we declare that in this place, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Father, as I minister tonight, Lord, I do so with the ability that you give, Father. I avail myself to you, speak through me and think through me, Father. Lord, I thank you that each one that hears will be edified and encouraged and strengthened by your word and the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, you begin to get in the presence of the Lord, and it's so true that just the things of the world begin to grow strangely dim, strangely dim, you know, hallelujah, because all things in him are eternal. Those are the weighty, heavy things, the things that abide are in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy tries to make the mountains seem so big. <laughs> but compared to him, it's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Y'all just press through your flesh. <laughs> And came tonight, because I know the sleepies were trying to hit a lot of people with that hour. (laughs) So glory to God, something special. Praise the Lord, something special here tonight. Glory to God for you. Just reach out by faith and and receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Samara, thank you. Thank you. Such an anointing. Praise the Lord. Such an anointing. Such an anointing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, pastor's been teaching us about joy, right? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And he's been teaching us through Nehemiah, right? That joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. There's strength in that joy. Praise the Lord. And you know, all of last year, the uh, Lord just had me teaching us on how to build our lives, right? Proverbs 14, 1, a wise woman builds her house but it's the foolish one that tears it down. And so it's the wise one that builds it up. So, I mean, we talked about our emotions. We talked about our thoughts. We talked about how the devil operates. We talked about all these things so that we would know how to build our house wisely. Glory to God. Build our lives wisely. Glory to God. And so, you know, praying we're in this year, for this year of 2018, the Lord's just really got me on the inner life, how to build our inner life. You know, because everything on the outside begins to flow from in here, really. You know, we know that Third John says, Beloved, God said, Beloved, I would above all things that you prosper and be in health even as, right? If I've got something that's even as, right? My hands now are even as, this is not even, even as your soul prospers. 
So the prospering of your soul is in direct connection to the prosperity in your life, right? And that's not just financially. That is mentally, physically, socially, emotionally. It's all those things. And so as our soul goes, so will we go, right? Our mind, our will, and our emotions, right? And so talking about the inner life, in 2 Corinthians, let's go here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. I want us to see something here that Paul says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, actually verse 16. I think I gave them a different verse, but hallelujah. Amen. It is so good. I'm so grateful for the word. It's truly what has changed my life. It's what has changed my life. Allowing this word to transform the way I think, right? Because you know that's what happens. The circumstances of life try to conform you. They try to mold you according to the circumstances, right? They try to mold your attitudes and your ideals and your ideas and even your identity. That's one of the things I believe the enemy comes for first is your identity, Because, you know, you got to really think about that, you know, because you are the very thing that he desired to be, right? We know in Isaiah, it was Satan that said, I will be like God. I will exalt my throne above God. And so what did God do? He created us in his image and in his likeness. So we are like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in his image. Glory to God. So he comes after that identity to try and warp the idea of who you are. Glory to God, he gave us the word. And we know Romans 12, 1, right? Hallelujah. Don't be conformed, fashioned after, adapted to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this word is given to us to straighten out our thinking. Glory to God. You know, and where Pastor was talking about joy, it is really important that you gain the knowledge that joy is not the result of Joy is not the result of. It is not the result of your bank account being exactly what you want it to be. It is not the result of your relationships being perfect. Joy is not the result of. Joy is the product of. It's the product of your spirit. It outflows from. It is a spiritual force that we are given that we can tap into. Glory to God. And when you come to that realization, nothing can steal your joy. When you really know where it comes from. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so Paul says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Boy, I just went all over the place. Chapter 4, verse 16. He says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now, when you begin to look at this in context of what Paul's talking about, he says, for this cause. Well, for what cause? What cause is he talking about? For the cause of Christ. For the cause of Christ. Because if you go down here in verse 5, 2 Corinthians 4, 5, he says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of churches today that don't even mention the name of Jesus. You don't even hear Jesus. You don't hear salvation. You don't hear anything about Jesus. Oh, man. And Paul says, I I preach Christ. I preach Jesus. Jesus. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. See, he wanted us to get the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Hallelujah. See, remember, there was once a veil, but now we're face to face. We have that direct fellowship with him. There is no more barrier. The barrier of sin has been forever removed because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he says, but we have this treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That's exactly what this thing is an earthen vessel, but there's a treasure in that earthen vessel. And it's so important that you begin to understand what that treasure is within us. Glory to God. And Paul said, for this cause, I faint not. Though I know my outward man, this earthen vessel perishes, right? Though I know there's something inside me, there's a treasure inside me, and it's renewed day by day. See, it never perishes. It never perishes. Glory to God. It's eternally there forever. Your soul and your spirit are forever, forever. 
Glory to God. And so what Paul is saying, for this cause, for the cause of Christ, I preach Christ. I don't faint. I faint not because I know that inner treasure. I want everyone to come to the knowledge of Jesus and the treasure that's in them because the power of that treasure, the excellency of the power is not of you, but it's of Christ. So when you begin to gain the knowledge and understand that, the leaning on yourself, that'll change. That'll begin to change because then you really understand where the strength is. That it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the more you begin to realize that, you begin to lean on and rely on that treasure within you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so that's what Paul's saying here. And, you know, again, we learned about Proverbs 14. 1. It's a wise woman that builds her house. A wise woman. You know, the thing about God's wisdom is God doesn't just slap his wisdom on you. You have to yield to that wisdom. Because wisdom is a choice. You yield to it. You don't have to. You can live foolishly, right? We have the choice, right? He, he told us back in Deuteronomy, I set before you Life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Because again, I think for, for anybody here that heard Pastor talk about years ago, we had a woman in, in our, um, well, it began as a Bible study, and, and she did say that. She said, I just wish God had created me a robot, you know? And it's like, because then she's thinking then she would do everything right, right? I mean, her heart, I knew her heart in saying that, but glory be to God, he didn't create us robots. He didn't want that. He wanted fellowship, glory to God. And so he's given us all a free will and we choose. See, he's not a dictator. He's not a, he's a loving God and he doesn't dictate. He doesn't tell you, you have to, and you must, and you, you choose, I said it before you. I've given you my wisdom. It's here available for you. It says in the book of James that all we have to do is ask, and he'll pour it out liberally and upbraideth it not. So it's there available, but it's our choice, right, to yield to it or not to yield to it. And so we yield because really when you think about life, life is full of choices. You are where you are at today based on your choices, strictly based upon the choices that you've made. And so glory to God, the more we begin to transform our minds and get God's thoughts, hallelujah, our life begins to straighten out. Praise the Lord. It begins to get right. What's not right begins to get right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the events of life, they try to shape our thoughts, right? Because think about this. You don't go anywhere that your mind hasn't first gone, okay? Because thoughts produce desire, right? Thoughts produce desire. The more you think about something, the bigger that desire gets on the inside of you, and you're going to go that way, correct? And so if thoughts produce desire, right, well, I want to have God's desires, godly desires, glory to God. And so the events of life, what happens is they try to shape our thoughts, they try to shape our attitudes. If you remember, I taught this um, I don't know, I probably taught it a few years ago, but, uh, you know, all of us come from someplace, you know, and I mean, we live in a world, we live in a world that's full of the curse, right? It's the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that raises us up and out of that curse of the law of sin and death that's operating in the world, right? And so all of us come from some level of dysfunction, you know, some of us more dysfunction than others, but every one of us are touched in our life by some kind of dysfunction, right? Because people are people and there's no perfect people, right? Let me know when you find them, right? Right? Um, I haven't found any, right? Because people are people, right? And they're not perfect. And so when you study in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, it talks about, you know, people think of, of generational curses, right? Let's just say alcoholism has been a part, you know, in your family. That's what, was, was what I dealt with growing up was my father was an alcoholic. And so what happens is you got to remember Jesus paid the price for the curse. So you're not under the curse. The blood of Jesus paid the price for the curse. But what happens is, as you're growing up, that that word iniquities, right? Because in Deuteronomy 5, it says that the iniquities of the father is passed on from generation to generation, right? That word iniquities is avon, A-V-O-N, and it's a bent. It's a bent. And so when you grow up under a particular iniquity 
influence, say it's alcohol, right? As you're growing up, just like a palm tree, right? When it's young, as it's growing up, when the I mean, there's certain palm trees that you see literally. I used to live in Palm Beach. There was palm trees that looked like this. They grew like this because what happened is those hurricane force winds, as that tree was young, that plant is trying to grow and that wind is blowing and blowing and blowing against that tree and it begins to bend. And what happens is now in adult, it's adulthood, it's grown up with a bent. And see, what's happened in families is you've got families that have grown up with bents, right? And it could be that it's an attitude, right? I mean, you could grow up in a household that was so negative. Negative, negative. Everything was awful. Everything was bad. It's just all is negative. Everybody's after you. Everybody's, you know, talking about whatever it is. And you can grow up with that bent because you've been influenced by that negative, 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 negative all your life. And you want to break out of that negative attitude. And I'm telling you, the only way you're going to do it is by you beginning to transform your mind and take God's thoughts. Because what's happened is you've grown up in that influence for so long, now you've grown up with that bent. But hallelujah, hallelujah, we have been redeemed because of the blood of Jesus. And so now it says that you can transfer righteousness from generation. Study that Deut Deuteronomy chapter 5. You can study that righteousness from generation, and you can pass on righteousness from generation to generation. So now, hallelujah, you begin to take God's thoughts, you begin to transform your life, and now you pass that on, right, to your children, and your children now grow up without that bent glory to God. They grow up, right, under the anointing and the truth and the light and the life of the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for how my children are getting to grow up. Hallelujah. So different than how I grew up. But I'm telling you, there is no place too dark, too far, too deep that God can't get you out of. There, there isn't. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's the great redeemer. He's the great restorer. Hallelujah. He's the great reconciler. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we all face unpleasant circumstances. The events of life try to shape us and mold us, our attitudes, our thoughts. <clears throat> um, but there are times where we may find ourselves, and this happens in the middle of a circumstance, a hard circumstance, right? And you may find yourself in that circumstance for a period of time, right? And when you do, when you find yourself in the middle of unpleasant circumstance, right, and you're in that situation for a period of time, right, there's times where you feel helpless, right, to change anything, but, but you're not. Because there's, there, there is, you can always change your outlook, right? You may not be able to change the particular circumstance or situation, but you can always change your outlook, right? You got to think of Hebrews 11, right? Chapter three. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, right? The worlds were framed by the word of God. When God looked out upon the earth, right? We know in Genesis chapter one, it was tohu va bohu in the Hebrew. It was chaos. It was darkness, right? But it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. They began to be framed and take shape, right? By, right? What God spoke. Hallelujah. For the things that we see are not made by things which do appear. Glory to God. Because from the eternal, from God inside himself spoke his desired result. Glory to God. And see, even in the middle of the worst circumstances, we can look out from the inside with God's thoughts. Amen. Hallelujah. We always have the opportunity to look out from... You got... What is it in... Um, Let's look in Romans 8, 28, right? We know that all things work for good to those who are called of God, who go, right? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose, right? All things will work to good. Well, how? How, how is that? Yet, yeah, pastor, well, you know, you, go, <laughs> you have no idea what I'm in the middle of. All things work together for good. You tell me how this thing's going to work out for good, Right? I mean, that's how we feel sometimes when we're in the middle of something, right? Well, you know, when you study this, Paul begins to talk about the Holy Ghost. He begins to talk about praying in the Holy Ghost. Look in, let's go there. Let's go ahead and just, let's put our eyeballs on it because I want you guys to see this because we're talking about the treasure that's inside of every one of us. And the more we gain the knowledge of that treasure, you'll begin to rely on it. And how do you rely on it? And how do you use that treasure that's inside of you? Okay, Romans 8, 
right? Uh, let's see, right, 28, right? And we know that all things work together for good, but go up above it, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So you got to understand, his Spirit bears witness with our spirit. See, the Holy Spirit has the mind of God. And what this is saying is as you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you, you are praying the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. And so what this is saying is all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. As you begin to rely on that treasure within you, your mind may be going tilt, but the Holy Ghost isn't going tilt. The Holy Ghost knows all the details. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of the end. He knows how to get you out. He knows how to get you over. He knows how to get you through. And so what we've got to do is we've got to rely on the treasure that is inside of us and allow that to begin because what happens is he wants to smother your voice right he wants you to be so bound down and so in turmoil and and just everything so hard that you can't even think straight right but there's you don't have to leave it there we don't rely on our mind. We have something else, and it's the Holy Ghost. And so what we do is we begin to allow the Holy Ghost to begin to bear witness, right, with our spirit. And so our spirit begins to pray, hallelujah, and you're praying answers. See, the wonderful thing is really you're praying answers, glory to God, hallelujah, Hallelujah. And so we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. It may not look like it right now, but you're praying something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the treasure that's inside of us. But see, what's happened is, is there's been all this confusion about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? There's been a lot of confusion about it. And really, it's very simple. When you look into the Gospels, glory to God, you find three baptisms. Glory to God. See, because what's happened is people have tried to take Ephesians 4, 5, right, and make a doctrine out of it. And I'm telling you, you haven't really studied it, right, because Ephesians 4, 5 refers to Romans 12, 5, which says, we being many members are one body in Christ. Because Ephesians 4, 5 says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So people will try to tell you, oh, no, there's not another baptism, right? There's one baptism. Oh, no, no, no. We're all baptized into one body. Glory to God. Three baptisms you'll find about. First one is positional. Glory to God. Positional. The word baptism simply means submerged. Simply means submerged into, immersed into, right? And so it comes from the word baptismo, right? So the first one is positional. We are all baptized into Christ, into one body. The way God sees you is in Christ. Glory to God. So the first one is positional. The next one is pictorial. It's a picture, right? Because that's water baptism, right? We know, what is that? In Matthew, right? It says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Water baptism, now understand this, water baptism is for believers, glory to God, but water baptism does not save you, right? Because that doctrine is preached also, that you, you, the only way to be saved is by water baptism. Well, that's not true because we know Ephesians 2.8 says that we are saved by, we are saved what? by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast, glory to God. And we know that's true also because you look in Luke 23 at the thief on the cross, glory to God, Right? This day will you be with me in paradise. He hadn't been water baptized. He believed on Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. And then the third one is the power. The power. The power baptism. And that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We know in the book of Luke, it says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all we have to do. Oh, fill me to the fullness, Lord. I want it all. I remember that was my prayer. That was my prayer at 18 years old. Hallelujah. I'd heard about it. My life was a wreck. <laughs> and I know I needed it. I knew I did. Glory to God. And so that's what I said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I think it was about a month later I received my prayer language. Praise the Lord. For some people it's immediate. It's not always immediate. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, this is a picture of what happens. 
Glory to God. Let me just give you this picture. Right? See, before you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're void the presence of God. Hallelujah. And you really can't even receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what bears witness and draws your spirit to God. Hallelujah. And so you receive Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You allow his presence. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then what happens? This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right? That's it, right? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. That's the power that comes upon us. And I'm telling you, that's what we can rely on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is a powerful gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. See, once you believe on Jesus, all the power, all the healing, all the anointing, it's all there. It's all there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this is that treasure, hallelujah, that is in us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But we have to ask, you know, since the eternal things, right, are, 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 are what matter. If I had a rope up here, I think years ago, Pastor did, did this. I was going to bring one of the girls' jump ropes. I didn't do it. Um, but if I had a rope up here, right, let's just say it was, you know, from the pulpit here to about here is a rope, right? On that rope, if I had it taped off, this is about our time on earth, right? And this is eternity, right? Right? I remember showing my kids that one time. One of, one of my kids was going through something, a challenge, you know, and I said, hey, honey, you know what? Said there's gonna get a, you, you're gonna get to the place in your life where you're not even gonna remember this, <laughs> right? It, but when you're in the middle of it, you don't feel that way, right? Because it's the biggest thing, right? But then I showed them that picture of that. I'm like, look, 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 look. This is this really is our time here on the earth. It's so short. Even at 120 years, it's so short compared to eternity. Hallelujah. And when you really understand that, you're gonna live this by that, right? You're going to realize that it's the eternal things that we do in life that bear weight, right? That really matter. Hallelujah. And so then what we need to do is we need to ask the Holy Ghost, right? You know, what have I built wrong in my life? You know, because if it's the eternal things that last and that matter, right? That's what I want to build, that's what I want to build in my life. And you know, the wonderful thing about God is that it's never too late. Amen. It's never too late to start building right. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to show us this tonight. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. When I saw this, it ministered to me so much because, you know, I came out of a lot of dysfunction, you know, again, as all of us, some, some kind of dysfunction we all come from. And so this, this is a picture of our heavenly father, hallelujah. Verse 44, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy, and for joy, and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buys that field. Hallelujah. I even saw it in another light as I even saw where I saw joy, because, you know, pastors have been ministering on joy, you know. And this verse, what it's talking about, see, is, is you're the field. You're the field. And, you know, what the enemy wants you to think is that when you just look out at the field, all you see is dirt and grass and weeds and rock. But God looked out at that field and he saw value. He saw treasure. Amen. And for the joy, he sold all that he had to buy that field. Amen. Glory to God. And that's exactly who we are to him. So many times we look at ourselves like we're just that dirt and that rock and that weed. And we see no value. But we see there that God took out of himself because he looked and he saw 
The wonderful thing about God is that he doesn't see things how they are. He sees things how they're going to be when he gets through with them. Why, Romans says that God calleth those things that be not as though they were. And that's what he did with us. Hallelujah. But see, in the same way that we see here, this man sold all he had to go buy this field, right? And it was joyful for him because of the treasure he knew was there, that he saw was there. He saw the potential there, right? Well, you know that God wants us to do that same thing. When we find a treasure in the word, he wants us to depend on that treasure. See, that man sold all he had and depended on that treasure to put him over. And that's what our value of God's word should be to us, right? That when we find those promises and the truth of God's word, that everything else pales in comparison to that. And we know that that promise, that word, that truth, we depend on it to put us over. Glory to God. That's the power of the word. But see, if it's never valuable to you, if you never consider it that this is your answer, then it will never be powerful to you. It will never be powerful in your life until you get to the place that you value it, that you see that, no, my life depends on this. Glory to God. That's how valuable it is. Hallelujah. And you know, the thing is, is we've got to raise our confidence to the level of God's confidence in us. Because really, Look at that. Look at how God saw us by faith, right? He loved you before you ever loved him. (laughs) Hallelujah. All of mankind. I mean, really think about that. I mean, he looked out upon the earth at a treacherous, a treasonous, evil mankind and said, your treasure. That's awesome. That's the heart of God. Hallelujah. That's how he sees us. That's how he saw us. That's how he sees us. That's how he sees you right where you are. No matter, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, hallelujah, your treasure. Hallelujah. That's how he sees you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's how we should see his word to us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I love that it says for the joy. He he, he, he sold it all for the joy, hallelujah, that he knew that this treasure would bring. See, you know, it reminds me of Hebrews where it says that, that Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. It says, Jesus, looking ahead for joy. <laughs> you were the joy that he saw in going to the cross. It's how he endured the cross, it says, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's who he is. Glory to God. And Jesus stuck his neck out far enough to buy and pay for the earth with his own blood and get it all back, not knowing if one human would believe it. Not knowing if one human would ever believe in him. But he spoke by faith, and he called things that be not as though they were, and he looked through the eyes of faith, and in Luke 14, 23, he said, my house will be full. Glory to God. And God never changes. He never speaks darkness. He never speaks death. He never speaks defeat. He always speaks life. Glory to God. He speaks the word that is full of light, healing, power, and love. He speaks belief, and he believed enough to give all he had without reserve. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we must rise up to the level of that confidence that God has in us because he paid that price. Glory to God. Romans 1.16, the gospel of Jesus Christ, I said this before, is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36, right? 
It says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. (laughs) For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. There's three things in there, confidence, patience, and promise. Those three things, and it all works together. We want, to things, we want to see things change instantly, but that's not normally how, the way things work, right? We'd love that, right? It's not a Burger King life, right? <laughs> right? No, it's for sure. The word says the whole kingdom of God is as a, a seed, right? Planted in a field, right? And that's the way God does everything is with seed continuously, it's how faith works, right? Luke 17, 5, the, deceit, the, the disciples, when they asked Jesus, right, increase our faith. And what was Jesus' response, right? He said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say. In other words, he's saying, if you'll use what you have, it'll grow. If you will plant what you have, it'll grow. Hallelujah. And that's our part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. And what you hear yourself saying is critical to either building or destroying your faith. What you hear yourself saying is critical to either building or destroying your faith. And then I wanted to give us four things that help to develop our inner man. And the first one, of course, is prayer. It's prayer. Now, what some people call prayer is complaining, right? Because I ministered this at the the, uh, ladies' conference we had on Friday, right? And Mark chapter... Four, right? I mean, the, the, the disciples stood up and, and told Jesus what Satan said, right? We're going to die, right? And some people go to prayer that way and tell God what the devil has said, right? And so um, that's so what some th- people think is prayer, you know, is not prayer, right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer is, it, and you know, the thing about prayer is you're continually acknowledging your need meter, you know? Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thanking him for the answer. Lord, this is my situation, but I know your word says this. So I thank you that you are. And what what we even learned tonight, that you are working all things, right, for the good, because I love you, Lord. And I'm called according to your purpose. Hallelujah. And then begin to draw on the Holy Spirit that is within you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then the second thing is fellowship with God, being a friend, right, to God. Abraham called himself a friend of God. Now, how? Because Abraham began, you got to even think of that with Abraham. Abraham knew nothing of God. Abraham was a pagan, but God showed up and revealed himself to Abraham. And so Abraham, he called himself a friend of God. He began to to develop in his relationship with God. Hallelujah. And that should be, I call this practicing the presence of God. All day long, we should be practicing the presence of God, right? Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Lord, what do you think about this? You know, I'm about to do that. What do you think about this? Hallelujah. And, 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 and keep that open communication engaged. Glory to God. The third thing is constant meditation in the word. Hallelujah. This is what Joshua did. And God told Joshua, if you will do this, you will make your way prosperous and have good success. If you would meditate on my word, whatever it is, if it's that, you know, that you need to overcome or do something, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. And as you begin to do that, it gets bigger. That's you planting that seed and it beginning to grow and get bigger and bigger on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And then the last thing is continual praise. Continual praise. You know that keeps your heart right? That keeps your heart right. Continual praise. And it keeps you from getting over into that negative, naggy, bad attitude, right? You know, and it and it helps to deal with pride. It really does. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you know, truly, really, I bet every one of us in there, if I was to go through the room, every one of us could say, you know, everything good in my life has come from him. Everything good, every good and perfect thing comes down from the Father of lights, right? In whom there is no shadow, no variableness, no changing. Hallelujah. He is the picture of consistency, of consistency. And you know, that helped me in my life. I heard years ago, Gloria Copeland said this. She said, inconsistency lies the power. 
Inconsistency lies the power. Think about anything that you've done in your life that you've been consistent at. That's when you've seen the breakthrough, right? Uh, working out, right? Right? If, you, if you're going to work out one day a week and then eat ice cream cakes and donuts all week, right? They ain't, you're not going to see, you're not going anywhere. You're going to go backwards probably, right? So inconsistency lies the power. Hallelujah. And so that's, that's our place with God. Inconsistency lies the power. You begin to, to see. You know, it says that those that love me and keep my word, I will manifest myself to them. Hallelujah. And as you see yourself being consistent in doing the word, you'll begin to see that power. You'll begin to see him manifest himself in all different ways in your life. Every place that I've gotten breakthrough in my life is because I have decided not to give up. Amen. Glory to God. And you know, failure is not failure unless you give up. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I, I want us, um, this, this for 2018, we're just going to talk about um, building in the inner man. There's some really great teachings from Rick Renner that I, I'd like us to see. Um, and then I also want to, and I, I think it might be because I've been studying a little more about this, but the Proverbs 31 women, woman, I went back to it. And you know, it, the Bible calls her the virtuous woman, right? And that word virtuous, it's goodness, it's right action and right thinking and morality. And as you study, this woman is depicted as the wisest woman in the Bible. Glory to God. And I encourage you to read it, but I'm going to share some key points, and it shows you what her secret was. Glory to God. So I, I want us to talk about that. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So let me go ahead and close us in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we are so grateful for your word that you have not left us helpless without a manual for life. God, thank you. Thank you for your word. And as we leave here tonight, we, will, we are just reminded of the weight and value of your word in our life. And Father, that, that we will yield ourselves, Lord, to your wisdom, to the Holy Spirit. And Father, we just thank you that you're ordering our steps. Your word says that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for ordering our, step, our steps. We, we yield ourselves, Lord, to your direction. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, you are welcome to fellowship. And um, there's coffee. Okay, so we don't have any treats tonight. Oh, there's good. Oh, well, hallelujah. She still pulled through. Amen. Okay, picture of consistency. Okay. Because, right, like, hadn't even heard. Okay, glory to God. Praise the Lord. So be blessed. Love you, and we'll see you the next time. I'll post the, get John to post the dates of when um, the next few meetings are going to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen.